Hey everyone, my name is Keshav and welcome to episode 27. Today's conversation is with Jillian Carey, who is a medical school resident at the University of Saskatchewan. She completed her undergrad in accounting and began her career at Ernst & Young in Calgary. And then just before writing her CFE, Jill made the tough decision to leave EY and pursue medical school. First doing her BSc and then medical school, Jill looks back on her decision to change very positively and without any regrets. And she joins Sam to discuss her journey and where she is today. Jillian Carey. Is it Jill or Jillian? Uh, I go by Jill mostly now. Because <laughs> okay. I think that's what I was calling you in my emails. And then I yeah. saw your email and I was like, oh, there's a lot of Jillian. Okay, so welcome to the podcast. Um, I always start these things off with one of those weird, uh, weird questions, weird random questions. So here goes. If I recall correctly, you are or were at least trained as a yoga teacher. Is that correct? Yes. So I, I don't even know if this is possible, but do you have a favorite pose? Or if not, like, do you have a favorite pose of, uh, as of recently? Uh, I actually do have a favorite pose and that's funny that you ask. So it is Trigonasana or triangle pose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think my only like um, more hated pose would have to be warrior two. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a hard, it's a hard more. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the yeah. part. Why do you like uh, Trigonasana or a triangle? So I find that one. It, so it's like a, it's a strength pose. Um, mm -hmm. I find that it like definitely works on your alignment. And it's one of the poses that I can, that I can easily calm my mind in mm -hmm. quickly. Whereas the other poses, I find that it takes a little bit of time for that settling, but I don't know, Trigonasana is one that I just get into and it's nice. Plus I could do it when I was pregnant and postpartum. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. Um, and it's, I like the twisty, like, I love anything where you can do big twists. And so yeah. that's a really nice one. Yeah, you're right. Good leg, leg strengthening, uh, twisty one. Um, I gotta say it, my, one of my studios that I go to, she goes from, um, Trigonasana to whatever, like the floating yeah. half moon. Yeah. So that's it. Okay. Is that a common transition? Yeah. That's a common one. Yeah. Like the first yeah. six months of doing that, I was like super shaky and now it's <laughs> slightly better, but it's, it's. Yeah, it's a good pose for transitions. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Do you have a least favorite uh, yoga pose? Yes. Um, my least favorite one is Burkhasana. And that's just mostly because of my knees. So that's the one where you like are sitting on a block usually and your your uh, your knees are bent. Oh. And eventually like your bum will come down. That one is just more so hard because my body doesn't like it from running. So yeah, no, yeah. I am not a super big fan of that. And I do a stretching, like a Ramwad style, range of yeah. motion style thing. And they call it saddle, I believe. And that oh, was like okay. yeah. double saddle. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, the knees yeah. are cool. Yeah, I feel like, okay, this is going to go good. We, we have similar, mm -hmm. although- a good, oh, good memory. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, and is that a yoga, like a yoga stability? It ball is like a, a, a chair with a ball on it. <laughs> yeah, I love yeah. it. I love yeah. it. I'm such a background snoop. That's why like I have this great thing. Cause I'm like, <laughs> yeah. okay. So Jillian Carey, um, how do we know each other? Well, like we were kind of brainstorming back at what year it was. So 2010 E&Y. And I don't actually remember. Cause like I was put in the oil and gas group from mm. what I remember. I don't know what group you were in. I was in the large private slash small public group so group oh. three I think group were you group one or two Big I two. was I think I was one one okay. yeah and I won I'm trying to think if the connection was like Shauna Stranke or if yes. it was um Michelle yes yeah um yeah so I think likely both um yeah. but probably more so Michelle uh yeah. if, if I had to remember now just because she's she's still one of my like besties right now yeah so yeah. that's yeah and so why EY Calgary because you aren't a native Calgarian no so um I was kind of reminiscing a little bit with my husband who's also an accountant and um just kind of the change that's happened in the last like I guess 10-ish years in terms of Saskatoon firms and volume and so really in Saskatoon 
at max, the firms were hiring two people. Mm -hmm. And most of those positions were given to people who had done a summer job. And I didn't do a summer job. I actually worked for the RCMP in integrative proceeds of crime and money laundering was my summer job. I mean, <laughs> yeah. hold on, hold on. before we go on, did you just like, how did that come to be? As a summer um, job? So the University of Saskatchewan had this really cool um, summer program application thing where you like put in what you were interested in. And for some reason, this job came up and um, yeah, I interviewed for it. And actually they told me the reason, well, for other reasons that they picked me, but the other reason that they picked me was um, I had just finished this accounting class. I can't even remember what it was, but it was like system controls essentially. And so I had, they, and they didn't tell you this, but um, at the interview, they gave you um, a topic in integrative proceeds of crime and you had to give a five minute presentation. And I was like, oh my goodness, what am I gonna do? And I had just finished this class. And so I like drew this whole systems control thing and they were like, whoa, okay. <laughs> so that's what I did for my summer job. So I didn't actually have any connections with, um, with any of the firms. And really, I think when I went through interviews, like maybe out of my class, like two or three people who didn't have summer jobs got jobs in Saskatoon. So it was time to kind of branch out. And um, yeah, I had a friend in Calgary and I had interviewed for EY KPMG. And I think it was it called Hudson or I can't remember what it was called. Oh, I forget, but yes, I remember calling. I just remember the... they had like this, the, I remember them advertising that I, during tax season, they would have like this big chocolate thing and then people would like come and take off pieces. And I was like, oh, <laughs> um, ah, yeah, well, I really. Yeah. Yeah, I liked the environment at E and Y, and that's where some of my other classmates were interviewing. So yeah, that's how I ended up there. So you did your undergrad in business at the University of Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. um, side side note: Did you ever have Natalie Johnstone? I did. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I, I've collaborated with her since I got to mm -hmm. Dal. Um, so, anyways, again, that's so funny because my husband and I were talking about. I'm like, do you ever use consolidation anymore? Because that was the class that she yes. taught me. I had to do this huge project where we consolidated something. He's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's so okay. So we get down and we talk at a conference, and then we end up writing this giant three-part consolidations case together that yeah. I used um, with my students. She used with hers, and it's actually she now wrote a consolidations textbook. So okay. it's going to be a huge, like um, like a three-part case as part of her textbook that hits um in the September and I should probably stop talking about it because my students will be like I don't want to hear about your consolidation textbook because I have this really big test and it's like it's physically like printed out on a really big sheet of paper like several of them and yeah. it's consolidations because I teach it and yeah. um yeah no it's um it's one of those things where I think uh, in practice you either use it a lot um I got a student who uh, had to do t systems testing on 148 companies that were being consolidated so that he had to like test the system or you don't use it at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh no. Okay, that's okay. It's, it's all things I tell them, and it's good to know. But anyway, <laughs> um, Natalie did it, so she's always kind of been in the back of my mind when doing this course. Because I'm like, well, if Natalie can do it, you know, yeah. um, I can, I can do it, and I can call Natalie or text Natalie and, and get help along the way. And now it's been four years, and I'm, I'm comfortable in it. But it's like you said, it's one of those things that sticks out. Yeah. Like, because one was undergrad um, for your for your business degree, like yeah. probably the same as me. So two thousand four, two thousand eight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so that was that was your undergrad, and then because yeah. you did it, your business at U of S, and then you yeah. came out to Calgary, UI Calgary, in two thousand eight, and we met. There was probably about 30, 32 of us that started, and yeah. then throughout the next um, I don't know, few years, two and a half years. Um, different people went in different directions. And then we find ourselves at the summer of, um, at the summer of 2010. And then yeah. did you come to, you came to Vancouver, right? For the. No. So, so I oh. did, so I did MPAC. Right. Yeah. Yes. I forget. So then MPAC, um, there's a lot more grad programs available now. Okay. Um, and so MPAC at the time was only available pretty much at University of Saskatchewan. So you would have gone back there for both yeah. of the summers. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. All right. So working at EY, um, do you have any standout memories of that time? 
Uh, I have standout memories of, uh, yes. So my big client obviously was an oil and gas client. And so these were kind of little tidbits around the, that kind of pointed me into where I am now. But um, so I remember the term armchair auditing and <laughs> yeah. And I use that actually now for, for, uh, in my context as well. But, um, so I was like the person that they would send to go talk to the client and like get all this information from, and then oftentimes like I would ride the bus with these, like with clients. And so I really get to know them like outside of work. And so I was like the, the collector of information. So I remember, you know, I would have my section, but then they would be like, can you go talk to like so-and-so? So there was that piece. Um, and then also stand out was, um, I was trying to get into um, the like biotech small industry. Cause I was like, well, maybe if I can't be a doctor, then I will audit people who like do stuff in, in, um, in that field. And they couldn't get me on to that, a client like that, but they got me onto this one client who had this like museum of uh, inst like stringed instruments from like way back, I can't even remember when to <laughs> now. And it was at the client's like site. And so I remember like walking through this museum and it was like a really cool little thing um, that was nice to kind of like take a break when you're auditing, you just go like walk through the museum. Um, oh. and what else do I remember stand out? Oh yes. I remember going to do my first inventory count <laughs> in, I don't even know where. And then it oh. ended up like rain snowing and it was a little French community and they were like, you have to stay. And so they like put me up in this like little crazy oh. hotel and they were like, you're not driving home. <laughs> was that in Alberta or in BC? Yeah. Or? Oh, yeah wow. it was in Alberta. And I kind of remember which way it was. And I was counting was I counting? I can't even remember, but they were very, very nice little company. And then they were like, you're not driving home. <laughs> that is so, that is yeah. so, yeah. All these like random stories. So I actually, I'm very sorry. If we had talked about this at the time, I was on a biotech company and, oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I really liked auditing them because I got to audit pay, like payroll. And at yeah. the time, like we all start like making like 40 K in like yeah. 20, 2008. And I think like the starting salaries are still at 40K, although I will, I will say that there is a revolution uh, going on right now where it is no longer, they are starting to tour up to industry, which is really, it's nice to see the power kind of dynamic yeah. shifting. Um, so, and then I remember this, uh, the audit, the office manager made $120,000 plus mm -hmm. stock options for yeah. this like um, TSX venture uh, biotech company. And I remember like, oh, all right, yeah. small, small, you know, or large private, small public companies, maybe the way to go if the office manager, undesignated, I, you know, maybe not even a university degree, I'm like, is making yeah. 120. So anyways, that kind of, and it was, it was, it was pretty fascinating, but I definitely didn't appreciate it the way that, like, that you could have, yeah. right? And that's the whole interesting thing with um, how some firms are set up, <clears throat> and something for students to consider is, you know, there's a lot of limited mobility within some of the groups sometimes. So, yeah. you know, figuring out what you're interested in, if you are, have a particular interest. And then, um, you know, I don't know, um, getting a champion within the company that is yeah. willing to go beyond um, beyond the groups. And <laughs> the chocolate fountain, no, sorry. I'm just going back to like the recruiting and, um, okay. So I, one other thing that I heard recently, actually just this morning, is that a lot of the firms are saying, if you meet your client's needs, um, you're welcome to travel. So I think that that really opens up and working remotely. So yes. before we got onto the call, the whole, you know, this is a paradigm shift. The fact that we are doing a podcast after not talking for over 10 years, yeah. it feels less weird because we're used to, you know, hopping on a call and doing some recordings, doing some things like our, our whole work mentality is, is shifting. So if this can trickle down to the students, like yes. fabulous. Exactly. Exactly. So you kind of alluded to working at EY and that it um, sparked some items that are coming into play right now. Mm -hmm. So you were at EY, you're no longer at EY. Um, how about you tell us where you are today briefly, and then yeah. take us back to the decision that took you from EY to starting the path that you're on now. 
Yeah. So where I am right now is I am a fourth year obstetrics and gynecology resident. <laughs> yeah. And you're in Saskatchewan, right? In Saskatchewan. Yeah. In Saskatoon. Um, and so going backwards, um, the idea of being a physician was always kind of in the back of my mind. Um, and even just a little bit further back. So in my undergrad, like my electives that I took in undergrad were like biochem, chemistry, <laughs> not your not your average accounting yeah. complementary classes. Um, but I wasn't really 100% sure if I really wanted to do it. Um, and so then when I got to EY um, and saw that there was those other areas, like I mentioned, I tried to kind of get into those areas um, from like a business perspective. Um, and then really where the wheels started turning was actually my first year of MPAC, um, kind of coming together with other people from across Canada um, to do our MPAC first year. Um, when we had other classes that weren't accounting based, based actually like I'd say like 85% of the class had other plans of what they wanted to do. Like they weren't mm -hmm. going to stay in accounting and that's kind of where people started really talking about it and that's where I think I started to feel comfortable talking about maybe wanting to be a physician um so that's kind of end of first MPAC year Jill, um, I'm just and then there. sorry if you don't yeah. mind yeah you mentioned something where people started talking about it because I think this is something that I really want to point out um so for myself, people ask me, do you love accounting? And I was like, no, like, I'm sorry. Like, do I get excited in the morning and like want to debit and credit? And it's like, no, Great. but I, I like what, what it can lead to, what it can empower. But even having that discussion as a prof, people are like a little bit surprised. Yeah. So, you know, just to say, hey, listen, um, a lot of people, it's not uncommon to be in accounting, to be in business and not want that to be your end game. And it's also common for it to not be part of your middle or beginning or, you know, end game. And it's okay to take any path in between. And I think exactly. the key is, like you said, is to start, start talking about it and, yeah. and being open or at least find your people where you can have that conversation. Yeah. And I think that's, that was key is like, it was a safe environment to talk about it. And, um, yeah, like I think I can't even remember what the classes were, but we had to do different projects that weren't just accounting based. And I think that's really where the discussion came from. Like I know people that said that they actually wanted to own a hair salon and like it was just everything. Yeah. And then that's where it's like, I think I actually might want to be a doctor. And it wasn't like a weird, like, oh, it was like, oh yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fabulous. Hmm. Okay. So you start, and just to clarify, when you were doing your undergrad at U of S, um, were you in business from the beginning, taking yeah. biochem electives? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay. from the beginning. Yeah. All right. So um, you start talking about that maybe accounting is not, not the thing thing and that, you know, hey, I'm thinking about being a doctor, having those like positive like nods and then yeah. you leave first year MPAC and you come back to Calgary uh, at EY. Yeah. So then kind of refreshed, you know, ready to hit the ground running again and then that's when I started to uh, diversify a little bit like I wasn't just in the oil and gas um, group um, and so you know enjoying kind of seeing different different businesses working in different industries I think I had a really cool engineering client that um, I really liked and then um, and then it was second term MPAC and that's you know getting closer to the UV at that point and summer of 2010 yeah summer of 2010 um so now things are kind of getting real and I have to start thinking about um am I gonna write is the question because like most people who are in accounting like super type a um have a hard time well I had a hard time quitting was was oh. it, where it was at and yeah. with MPAC, like it, it's a great program, but your articling time gets extended because you're away in the summer. So um, my question was, do I continue or do I stop now? And the way that the curriculum was then is like, I believe like our CASB people and MPAC people in Saskatoon anyways, came yeah. together like, I think mid to end July, where we started working on yes. mod 
six. I yeah, know. yeah, you got it. <laughs> yeah, mod six are like it'd be capstone two equivalent now, but yeah, mod yeah. six, you got it. Um, and then we wrote kind of those mock. So when I remember from there was like a pretend U fee, mm-hmm. and then if you pass that, you were able to go on. Yeah. But in between that time, I think we had two two weeks or something. Yeah. And so I actually came out to Nova Scotia. Um, oh. for, oh, yeah, it was random. They had a really great seat sale and we had some points and went out there. And I think back then, like no one had Facebook or Instagram on their phone. And I really just disconnected from everything. And halfway through the trip, I was like, I'm not going back. I'm not, I'm not writing the UFI. I love it. So, uh, we flew home on Saturday I registered for classes on Sunday, went in to my accounting firm. Pre-med? Pre-med classes? (laughs) Went in to my accounting firm on Wednesday to tell them that I was quitting. And um, yeah, and then started my first year of uh, Fizz Farm after the September long weekend. Holy camole. Yeah. All right. Bring me through your your mindset. So you're, you're taking those two weeks, you're disconnected yeah. and you're just like, like what point were you like, were you like this? And then what were you thinking? I was thinking that, uh, I really didn't like it at all. And I didn't see that I could make something out of it. And I felt like I was there was too much time that was going to have to happen where I had to follow like the textbook, you know, articling in the accounting firm before I was going to be able to actually maybe do what I wanted to do. Hmm. Um, and like, truthfully, I think it just came back. Like, I think I was just trying to fit a square into a circle yeah. shape, which you can, it just isn't going to look great and it might not feel great. Um, and so I think I was just far enough away from all of the other voices and maybe like other people like I'm a I'm the eldest child and both my parents actually work in healthcare and they thought that it would be better for me to not go into healthcare and so I was trying to kind of appease that as well but realizing that it wasn't really my choice and then I didn't want to do it anymore Uh, we uh, we've talked about here on the show before about the well-intentioned um advice that sometimes like when the haters are out there, it's, they kind of suck, but like, you can identify them. You're like, you're haters. You do not have my best uh, interest in mind. I'm going to ignore you, but it's the well-intentioned advice the people that love us, that we know that care for us. Um, and sometimes they can be mentors as well, um, that we don't want to like disappoint, or we want to, um, not just that, just like take their advice. And, you know, when we're unsure, mm-hmm. borrow it for ourselves. So it's, it's interesting that you, sh- you know, that you should mention that because I'm sure a lot of people may, may relate. Um, sometimes students, and it's interesting, um, who are in their undergrad will say to me, well, I'm an accounting major. I just started my fourth year. It's too late for me to do anything else. So part of our conversation is to just put a big exclamation there and say bullshit. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not too late. It's never too late. And, um, you know, when like... Jillian, I wish that when I had found out um, about you, I wish that, you know, if we had been on Facebook or something, like, I wish I would have reached out to you then. And, um, and, but if not, then, then it's, I guess it's never too late, right? In the spirit. And so reaching out 10, 10 years later and reconnecting when I had a student um, about six months ago who said, you know, I don't think I want to be an accountant. And she is somebody who met with me every Thursday morning during the pandemic, during her fourth year to make sure she stayed on track. She was an A student. She wanted to remain as A student in accounting. And, and then she like said, Sam, I don't want to you know, be an accountant. I think I want to go to med school. Um, and so I immediately was like, this is fabulous. I want to reach out to Jillian because <laughs> she, you know, she was so brave and she really paved the way for a lot of people who have, um, who have that thought. And so I'm sure if you haven't heard it before, I'm sure there's other people out there that saw what you did um, and you're leading by example and um, it helped them be brave either in that way or in their own way. Yes. No, I think that, yeah, having someone that you can 
relate to, whether it's the same switch that I made or something similar is super important because yes, it was extremely scary and, and embarrassing. Like I, Mm. I felt like I had failed because then everyone in like my MPAC cohort, you know, went on to write their exam. Um, And at that point, like, like the statistics were, you know, they looked at those and like I was the person that didn't complete MPAC to go off to write the UFI um so yeah it was for a long for probably about two years I felt like I had done the the wrong thing um and I was definitely a bit like embarrassed about it and it was a super difficult decision to make and it had financial like consequences too like I had to pay back my firm for the payments for MPAC um yeah you had to go back to undergrad. You, to undergrad. If I recall, you moved from Calgary back to Saskatchewan. Yeah. Like this, this was not a light decision. And like in Calgary, you're surrounded by, you know, 20 or 25 other people that are very much like, this is the way. And even in the firm, if you, if you even said, like, I don't think I want to be partner. <laughs> like yeah. it was, it was like, Oh, what are you doing? Let alone um, like, I want to go do, you know, something completely different. And so you say you felt embarrassed and, you know, every part of me now wants to be like, no, 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 like you shouldn't. And I know, you know, that you shouldn't, but that's how you felt at the time. And that is yeah. completely normal. Just like the fourth years, you know, now we're like, maybe this isn't my path, like go explore. Um, like I've had students in the CPA program who went and one lived in, um, San Francisco or San Diego for two years training with the Canadian and U.S. swim team. Then he got hurt right before trials and came back and he was like, no regrets. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, maybe, um, maybe I got to the same place, but at least I know. Like, so, you know, we're all just doing our best on this path. But then when you're getting a strong enough indication that, hey, this isn't what I want to do. This isn't where I'm supposed to be at for me, then go change. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So go back to Saskatoon two years before you start feeling like, okay, this is um, a bit, Oh, actually, before we go back there, I just want to say your butterfly wings probably had large implications for me because, (laughs) um, and I don't think I've mentioned this here before, but um, about halfway through, through my like second, my last busy season. So in January of 2010, I was like, I hate this. Like it felt like Groundhog Day over and over and over. And um, then it hit like, I think it was February. And I was like, <sighs> call my dad. So I'm like 21, I'm like, ah, or 22. And I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. And he's like, you have six months, like just, or like seven months. He's like, go write that test. And um, then you can decide. And then you don't have to do this anymore. Yeah. So I secretly took my real estate license course um, through like April because I was like, I just need to do something else and set myself up for something else. I love real estate, gonna go like do real estate. Um, and it's obviously like nowhere as demanding as um, med school. So I was able to kind of do it part time. But yeah. it's it's funny that we, you know, had some parallel thoughts. So, anyways, my but my dad and I was like, Okay. And you know, the well-intentioned people, was he right? Was he wrong? I don't know, but that's the advice that, um, that I got. And (laughs) then, so then it's like, I'm just like kind of hold on, like, you know, get to the summer. Finally, we get like the summer off and how this comes full circle is, um, your, I believe your study buddy was lined up to be Michelle. Um, Mm -hmm. and she wanted to be study buddies with somebody in Saskatoon. Mm -hmm. And she was one of my only like really good friends at the firm that I was like, we have complementary skills. And essentially she'll call me out on my bullshit and I'll call her out on hers. So when you decided to go to med school, I got a study buddy. (laughs) So we did it remote, which was like unheard of. We would write the cases, email them, mark each other's, talk on the phone, and then go off and do our separate study plans. So, you know, anyways, thank you. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Small world. Um, Okay. So about two years, do you recall... Um, when you started feeling like, hey, like, and just really like feeling settled into your decision? Yeah, um, it was probably when I then felt, so even when I went back to school doing Phys Farm. Um, Sorry, what's Phys like, Farm? Just yeah, um, Physiology Pharmacology was the new program that I was starting. <laughs> yes. And uh, so obviously like 90% of the people that were in the class there were either going to go into dentistry 
medicine, um, physio, whatnot. So very competitive group. Mm-hmm. And school like had changed from like when I had done my undergrad before, like everyone was using computers in the lectures, whereas before we were writing things. So I had to like change that up. Um, and just like, it was a new competitiveness because, you know, you needed these specific marks to get into med school. Like everyone was doing, you know, all this additional outside stuff for their um, CV. And I was just like, man, I just want to get into med school. This is what I want to do. So um, probably two years into going back where I felt comfortable one also saying in that group hey like yeah I'm also applying to med school and two where I was like I actually can do this like I I am going to do this regardless so yeah definitely took a little bit of time to kind of feel comfortable even in that group which was everyone that was you know verbally saying that they were going to get into med school that I felt comfortable saying it too how, what advice would you give to somebody that would be in that two-year transition point where they're, you know, in that very vulnerable spot of mm-hmm. thinking they want to belong somewhere, not quite feeling like it, um, and, and having to live with that day-to-day um, sense of unease? What advice would you give somebody? Yeah. So there are always going to be people that are telling you that you're doing the wrong thing. And I think the best thing that I could tell you is to kind of make a little bubble for yourself keep that bubble positive inside and just let everything else bounce off that because otherwise um, there are lots of people that are going to tell you probably not the best decision. What would you say to those people now? <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I, I remember I had a, I had a professor. Um, so my path to get into med school here was quite uh, all over the place. So I was in a group where um, we didn't need the MCAT um, to get in. If you were if you were a Saskatchewan-based student, you just needed prerequisite classes that had not expired within a certain time frame. And so because I had taken all those science classes in my commerce degree, mm. literally everything had been expired. So I had to go and kind of take higher levels of physics and all of this other thing. So I was taking an, um, an environmental um, something class, I can't remember, but it was covering off for a physics um, requirement. And his wife was a physician. And I remember him saying, you know, you're kind of a little bit older to be starting this. Are you sure you want to do this? And I remember leaving his office just like bawling. And that probably set me back like well, I don't know how much it sent me back, but it, it took, it really hurt and um, questioned um, my choice again, because I respected him as a, as a professor and like his wife is a physician, like he lives with it. So maybe like he sees something in, in me and, and is kind of warning me. And so that one, that one took a hit for a while. So um, yeah, if I can go back and tell that person now, um, would be, I, I still did it. So. I did it. Um, mm-hmm. and like, it's funny cause age is a relative. It's so, it's so relative. Yeah. Right. Like how old would you have been at the time? Like, cause I got into med school when I was 27. Yeah. So probably <laughs> like 25. <laughs> I remember yeah. sitting on the plane um, and I ended up talking to the guy next to me and he was probably, I don't know, I'd say like late seventies, early eighties, something. And I was doing um, like some class prep yeah. and um, he thought I was an undergrad or something. And so like, I remember just like the timing of the ages is, is like, it just, people just don't know. And to like be now 35 and look at, yeah. I'm like 27. Like that's, you're like, that's young. Like 24 is young. 22 is young. 35 yeah. feels young. Yeah. Like it's just, and, and it's all relative. Like I want to have that long career that that person next to me in the plane is having. And so, sure. so what if I was doing classwork or if I was prepping for the class, like it's the path that I'm on now. And as long as every day, for the most part, like I'm doing something to like kind of get me one step closer or not even every day, like every week or whatever, like you can fit in, at least you're on the path. So it's, mm-hmm. it's really disappointing. Um, and I think the mind shift, um, has really, 
I see it changing in the last, you know, since last like 10 years, because we get to see more examples of people like yourself going out there and killing it saying, Hey, okay, there's this tradition of undergrad CPA. Um, I'm going to make it till manager. Oh no, better stay till senior manager partner. Like, Oh no, I have to do this, 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 this. And just calling like, no. Um, so when I quit, I quit in November, Mm -hmm. um, after we wrote and because my months were up, they had laid off one of my best friends after working, um, like 90 hours a week and Mm -hmm. like bleeding to the firm. They laid her off. And I remember just being like, had my real estate thing going part-time. Um, I, you know, had a couple of potential uh, consulting clients and being like, my months are up. Um, why am I here? And the only reason that I had not to quit was because I didn't want to be embarrassed because I didn't want people to judge me. And, um, and then I finally said, you know what, the people that will judge me are not my people. Um, so I left and I got a lot of hate. Um, but I sent a quick email. I put my real estate license, like my call, <laughs> like the signature. And I was like, this is for me. And then, um, and got a couple like, oh, you're going to make, you've made a big mistake, blah, blah, blah. And I remember thinking, I can always go back. Like I can probably, I can, I didn't have a good enough job. I left on positive terms. I can always go back. And if not EY, it'll be, you know, KPMD yeah. or it'll be, yeah. you know, a small firm or it'll be something else. And then at Eufy Mark, Mark's nights, um, where everybody gets like completely, you know, inebriated the na- night before they find out about Mark's, people mm-hmm. had a different tune, Jill. And I suspect that people um, would have sung a different tune to you at the time as well. Um, and they were like, you are so smart, like to get out, you have your months, like, I wish I would do what you're doing. Um, And I never stay till manager, have a good career that I'm proud of, Um, you know, so, you know, you're living your best life, I'm living my best life, our colleagues are living their best lives. And now we're able to show, you know, professors that, you know, somebody at 25, that's young, somebody at 35, that's young, like there is no predetermined timeline, because what are we all racing towards? No idea. No idea. Yeah. So um, that brings us to today. Um, Mm -hmm. And you had told us right before I made you go backwards to come forwards. um, You have, you mentioned um, your, your son. Yeah. Cade. Uh, Cade. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned briefly, I think maybe on here pre-call. So you're in Saskatoon, you have a husband, you have Cade, you're finishing up your last year of residency for um, it's Gynecology, uh, gyne- I'm sorry, obstetri- oh, these words, please help me out. So fourth year of obstetrics and gynecology. So I have one more year next. So finish this year and then one more. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. In Saskatchewan, um, on the path, um, any regrets leaving your CPA right at the tippy tippy end and being where you are today? No regrets. No regrets. No. What advice? would you give um, current Dell, we're gonna call them accounting majors, although this show really is up for management learners. So people Mm -hmm. that are possibly in business, in it to win it, curious about business, maybe some people that are in the program because that's where they're at, whether because that's where they started or because somebody else wanted. Um, So really broad and wide net. Um, But what advice would you have to current um, Dell management learners? So actually, I'm going to grab a piece of paper here because yeah. this was a little drawing that someone made for me. I think I was turning, <laughs> it wasn't my birthday before I was going into, that I got into med school and I was having a meltdown because I was turning 27 and, you know, not, not where I wanted to be and questioning again what what life held for me. So I don't know if this will show up because it'll be backwards, but so this was how most people think success should look with time on the bottom and success on your Y axis. It's showing up wonderfully, by the way. Yeah. But this (laughs) is what it actually is. Yeah. (laughs) I like how I'm like, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) And I don't know, for some reason, this just like made perfect sense. And all of my like worries kind of, you know, went away because I thought that it had to be that linear 
progression and I wasn't linear at anything on that curve. Um, and so, yeah, my advice is that success looks very different for everyone and your path there will look very different to the person that's sitting next to you. And really, if you have that little feeling in your gut that either you're doing the wrong thing or that you're curious about something, it will be probably one of the hardest things that you ever do, but it'll be probably the best thing that you ever do. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, and just so, say you did your path and then a year later you were like, I really wish I would have written this Yuffie. Could mm -hmm. you have gone back? I would have. Yeah. 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 Like you would have, you could have, it's yeah. not going anywhere. And no. you would have had in your heart, you would have known that you went out and you explored it. So you answered that voice. You answered that, that feeling, that nudge. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's always there. Uh, are you like a book or a podcast person at all? With all your spare time, Jill. <laughs> in my in my discipline, uh, so I listen to lots of Ob's Gain um, podcasts, but I also listen to the Feel Good Effect, which uh, is like kind of just a mom life thing. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I know. I was like, I when it, this question came up, I was like, mm, I don't know how much free time, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I haven't read a book for myself in a while, but yeah. <laughs> Yes. I, somebody, some, uh, there was a master's student the other day who asked me the last, uh, fiction book I read and I was like, Ooh, no, and I'm like, well, I'm halfway through Harry Potter second novel. <laughs> I've started a lot of them, but haven't finished any of them. Yes. Yeah. My last book that I've like finished, um, like, uh, fiction was over a year ago. Um, yeah. so, you know, it's, yeah. it's not perfect, but we they're try. always there. Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, so two last questions. First off, um, know you're super busy, um, but if any students or any grads or anybody listening to this wants to reach out, um, A, are they able to? And if so, what's the best way? Yeah, for sure. Uh, email is the best way. I have my phone with me all the time. Okay, cool. Do you want me to say my email or you want to? No, no, no. I'll link it. Yeah. I'll, um, Keisha is awesome and we'll, we'll get it linked down below. Um, just yeah. the, the one that you sent me? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. And then the last, last question is any, any final comments or anything else to add? Um, I'll just kind of talk about my, where I am right now. And um, like, I love what I'm doing. And um, if you could use the analogy of obstetrics and gynecology, if you can find a career that you'll get up at two o'clock in the morning from your warm, comfy bed and be so excited like you were the first time that you got to do it, you're pretty lucky. And I get to do that every day. I get to deliver babies. I get to do surgery. I get to work with women. I get to work with families. I get to be a part of people's lives in the most craziest and the most sad and like super high, fast pace. And it's just awesome. and. I love it. And I'm sure you could find a, a place like that in accounting as well or any career, but if you can find that, it's going to make life so much, um, not better, but it's just very complimentary. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds, it sounds like you have a very rich and fulfilling life and that you've created this for yourself and yeah. you've done so by by being brave and, and listening to that voice and really um, following your definition of success. Would that be fair? Yes. Yes. I think that's fair. <laughs> Fabulous. All right. Thank you so much, Dylan. Appreciate this. No problem. <laughs>